Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Ben Salem Township Council meeting. Today's date is June the 12th, 2023. I would like to introduce you to our council members and those at the dais so you know who we are. And we have uh, some interesting things happening this evening with the D.A.R.E. program. And we have uh, our police officers. We have the uh, recipients here this evening. So that's wonderful. Well, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Phil Worcester, which is our township engineer. Debbie McBreen, our township council clerk. And going to my extreme right, we have our solicitor, Joe Paizo. We have the Honorable Mayor Joseph DiGeralamo in attendance this evening. Our council members are, I'll start with uh, Joe Knowles, our secretary. Stacy Champion, a member. We have uh, Michelle Benitez, a council member. I have Joe Plary, vice president, and I am Ed Kisselback, president of council. I'd like to begin by asking you to please rise for a moment of silent meditation, as well as following by the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For all. At first, we're going to start with the presentation of the D.A.R.E. poster contest winners. And do we have anyone from the uh, D.A.R.E. program, from the Drug and Alcohol Board? Hi. Can we have you guys and gals come up here and stand here, please, with the officers? And who's going to and who's going to take it from there, from the police department? Uh, Detective Palmer, and I will, sir. Okay. Uh, when you're going to speak, you have to speak at the podium or the microphone, so we can hear you. On, well, there is no re rebroadcast of the council meetings, but in the future there may be. Thank you, sir. Okay, Mr. Uh, or Detective Olivero. Thank you. My name is Brian Oliverio. I'm a detective here with Ben Salem Police Department, along with Detective Carrie Palmer. Uh, we are tasked with delivering D.A.R.E. to our students. The nine elementary schools we have in Ben Salem Township, we deliver D.A.R.E. to each one. There's currently five D.A.R.E. instructors, and during the course of our 10-week program, the children do an essay, and they also have a, a D.A.R.E. poster contest, which is um, a program that's been going on since I've been teaching D.A.R.E. the last 16 years. And the program is funded by the Drug and Alcohol Advisory Board, which we have uh, most of our members here tonight. So we give out the instructions to the schools. They usually do it as, a, as an art program. And we had over, I think, over 120 submissions this year. So one of our Drug and Alcohol Board meetings, we looked over well over 100 posters, and it was, it was tough to choose just five of them tonight. So the five winners will receive gift cards. First place, $175 in gift cards. Second place, $125. Third is $100. Fourth is $75. And fifth is $50. So the gift cards will go to the students to use as they please. So we have three of our winners here tonight. The last two could not make it, but we'll get the cards to them. So winner number one. Hello. Winner number one is Harm Harmony Sellins from Valley School. Brian, Brian. Are, are, the, are, are the posters, are they, yes, sir. Are they so adhered to the, uh, the uh, tripods? Uh, or? You can take them off there. Yeah, we, can, we have the, can we have the winners come up here and hold the posters uh, so we can see it on the TV? Absolutely. Thank you. And, and just stand right here, Hunt, and, and you're going to know. Yeah, we would like to see it. Can we pass it? Number two. I think we'd like to change the regulations and rules next year to include the council to participate in a possible $175 prize, you think? <laughs> I agree. Contribute to it. There you go. This is the hardest contest because they're all outstanding. That is gorgeous. That is really nice. Tough to do. Now, and united in the fight. That's great. All different hands. Wonderful. That's that is place. really good. Yes. That's great. Congratulations. Thank you, hon. And just hold it up so we can, after we get done. Exactly. So you can stand right in front of it, right here. Oh, I don't know if we have that many people, but. Our second place winner is J.D. Schilling from Cornwells. And James Ward this year's there, sir, as you can see. 
Yeah, I love that shirt. It looks great. It looks good. <laughs> Let me see what you got. Let me read it. Let's read it. Great job. It says, people play a lot of games. Don't play Gianna. with the drugs. Alcohol. Very nice. Good. That is so true. Excellent. You don't have a four wall. Great job. <laughs> Third place from Belmont Elementary School is Gianna Move more towards Adair. the center. Move towards the center. There you go. So everybody can see it. Turn that way. There you go. There's a camera there so they can see on TV. Okay? There you go. Who do we have here? Gianna. Three dimensional, huh? Look at that. Nice. Wow. Very good. Good job. Okay. James, go on the other side. Yeah. I think I would have gone for first on that one. There you go. That's good. Fourth place from Valley Elementary, CC Barton. CC is not here tonight, but I would like to show CC's poster. Thank you. This is CC's from Valley Elementary. There. Nice, nice. Good, good. Can we get one of the drug and alcohol members to hold that up so the people can see it? They get a chance to view them all. Mr. Frank, you look great tonight. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thanks. And fifth place is Sierra Grams from Faust Elementary School. She is not in here today, but I'd like to show you her pictures. They're all good. They the world and everything. Yeah, I tell you. Yeah, I would let a, somebody from, I let somebody from the art school judge that stuff. You know what I mean? Come on, Rose. If the parents would like to take a photograph, they can stand up in the middle of the aisles. You don't have to sit down, you can stand up. Take a photo of the girls and the guys. in the mail, ladies. <laughs> Will do. Will do. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming out for the D.A.R.E. poster winners. Um, once again, I'd like to thank the mayor, thank Chief McVeigh for making this program possible. A lot of townships have uh, stopped doing D.A.R.E. Lieutenant Donnelly is in charge of D.A.R.E. He lets us uh, do our scheduling. We get all the materials we need every year. It's been consistent. Um, the teachers love it. The students love it. I have two of my own D.A.R.E. graduates. Um, from a few years ago that went through the program. So I just hope it continues. And thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you. you guys are good. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, boy. And if the parents would like to leave. Sure you can. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Take it outside the camp.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to interrupt the, the meeting, the, the scheduled meeting and the presentation uh, because uh, of the emergency of the I-95 catastrophe, uh, the fire and the collapse of I-95. And we have Director Bill McVeigh, who is here, is going to give us an update as to what's happening. Uh, so hopefully you can use that to your advantage in terms of traveling uh, north and south. Uh, Director McVeigh, would you please come up here? Be kind enough. Following his presentation, we're going to have our township engineer also, Phil Worcester. He's going to also give you his interpretation of where we are and what's happening. Director, please. Good evening, Council President, Council Members, uh, Mayor, uh, members in attendance. So uh, the good news right now, as of 4 p.m. tonight, uh, there's been no impact to Ben Sam Township. Uh, we had our officers checking 95 continuously throughout the day. Uh, and, and monitoring the park and ride uh, off of Station Ave, which we thought would be impacted immediately. Uh, the report I got, it was extremely light traffic there this afternoon. Uh, it's the first day, so I believe that is going to be one area of concern for us to monitor uh, with the additional cars that we expect with the trains. Uh, yesterday, everyone has seen on the news the catastrophe that uh, occurred. Uh, around 6 a.m., we were notified just after 6. Uh, I was in touch with the mayor, I think, about 10 times yesterday regarding this. Uh, initially, we were impacted slightly because they wanted people off at Woodhaven to divert that traffic uh, to Route 1. Subsequently, there was a water main break and gas leak on Route 1 uh, at Southampton, so that had to be uh, diverted a little bit more. Uh, but throughout the night and throughout the day, uh, today, they were able to get back to Cotman Ave opened up. So really has had no impact on Ben Sion, which we're very thankful for. And uh, we've been in touch with the Philadelphia leadership and the Office of Emergency Management. Uh, offered our assistance if needed, but nothing has been needed. And uh, so far, uh, we are lucky uh, that it's not impacting our residents or our township. And anything I, I receive, I'll obviously let the mayor know. Uh, and we did post yesterday on our social media sites to get messaging out to the residents the alternate route so that they could at least uh, know where to travel and what to do if they're coming or going to Ben Sound. So we have the emergency uh, sites for people to look up is that is that what you're saying is that correct yeah so on, on our sites on social media the mayor's office and the police department we posted uh, the alternate routes that philly police were uh, advising and then you can also go on Penn dot site or channel six any of the news networks have the latest advisories uh, southbound is cotman ave exit northbound is betsy ross aramingo ave and it's a quick uh uh, diversion once you get off you're on the side streets for a few minutes and it gets you right back on 95 but they are requesting you to travel through New Jersey if possible uh, or down Route 1 just to avoid 95 at this time okay and, and may I and before you go off I want to ask Mr. Mayor your, your actual show is that scheduled for the coming weeks or coming several days your TV show no we haven't scheduled I'm saying, you think, um, I'm It'll suggesting be that would be the subject but matter exactly right like, so people But like you said, we're giving updates. It's on, you know, right. social media. Exactly. So. Anyone, else, anyone else have any comments from the council? Just thank you so much for being on top of that and making sure that everybody's informed. Um, it was a huge impact, and um, we appreciate you. You're welcome. I mean, they are, they are uh, estimating this to be months, uh, what that means. I was told six months originally, then a little less now, but I think we don't know that yet. So uh, hopefully it stays the way it is and people are taking the train or alternate routes and it doesn't impact us. Okay. Thank you, Director. You're welcome. Thank you. And uh, Phil Worcester, our township engineer. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, likewise, from uh, as Mr. Uh, Director McVeigh pointed out, we've been monitoring the situation as well with regard to the traffic issues associated with uh, the impacts to Ben Salem. And are pleased to report there, there are similarly very light impact uh, with regard to the traffic issues. We've been uh, looking at all the traffic signals because they are adaptive traffic signals that are made to change traffic signal timing based upon the volume. So if we see an uptick in volume, those signals will change automatically and will communicate to all the other traffic signals in the line. So if it's street road or uh, any other, most of the other uh, uh, corridors in the township, we have those signals uh, operating that way. So we can monitor them uh, 
at any time to see what's happening with the traffic volume and how the lights are working. We're pleased to report that everything is working very well. We've also been monitoring the Route 13 and Woodhaven exit as far as those traffic signals. Still no issues associated with that. The Cornwell's park and ride, as uh, Director McVeigh pointed out. Also, we also often see an uptick in traffic when there's an incident on 95 on Bristol Pike and State Road. And we've yet to see any great concerns associated with that that are that are out of the ordinary or are just more not much more than regular heavy volume. Uh, the uh, we've re we've coordinated with uh, PennDOT and their traffic unit associated with uh, any support that we can get from them and they and we could give to them. And we've also coordinated with SEPTA, who has uh, responded back to us on behalf to Ben Salem. Uh, that they uh, appreciate the offer, and if they need anything, they'll, they won't hesitate to reach out to ask. But they seem very prepared as well. Uh, we've also uh, reached out to the uh, Bucks County TMA, TMA Bucks, and they are also monitoring the situation. Their website is tmabucks.com, and they have information as well on there. Uh, and as you know, we have a close relationship with the, the TMA and they are similarly monitoring things and letting the public know what, what's going on with those, uh, those road closures and so forth. Uh, as Mr. McVeigh pointed out, they, uh, Director McVeigh, sorry, Bill, um, they pointed out that uh, it's gonna be at least four to six months. Uh, however, they're still coming up with a design. So we really don't know how long or what that's gonna take, but, but they have to immediately figure out a design on what to do to stabilize each section and add a new section on top of that. And it seems to me that most of that will probably be a temporary basis uh, so they could shore the thing up for, uh, if you remember what happened with the fire under 95 a few years ago, they had some temporary uh, 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 construction done to make it work and then they came back and did a permanent fix after that. So I think uh, PennDOT's in great shape with regard to what they need to get done to make this thing go away as soon as possible. Okay, and this is the southbound on 995 or the northbound, oh, excuse me? Uh, both, the northbound's collapsed, the southbound is compromised. The north, oh it is? So they're not going to be able to use the uh, southbound to? Uh... Correct, correct. Oh. So it's uh, the, between uh, exits 30 and 32 are, are closed. It's closed off. And that's Aramingo to uh, Cotman. To Cotman, it's not past, it's not the, the next academy, it's Cotman. Right, right, Okay. correct. All right, I thought they were talking about the possibility of using the other side to have. Well, well southbound you can get to Cotman. Right, okay. Yes. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions, uh, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, so there's an update, and uh, we're on, uh, obviously, the, the mayor and the administration, uh, the police department, engineering department, uh, on top of this in terms of um, making sure we're aware and making the, the uh, residents of Ben Salem aware of what's happening, because even though it's not in our township, it certainly affects everyone trying to uh, transcend from here to uh, to the different county of Philadelphia. Okay, we'll move on from there. Uh, before we go into uh, public comment, which is on agenda item number two, uh, I ask our solicitor, are there any changes of the uh, agenda this evening? Yes, uh, item number four on tonight's agenda, which is the application of Shack's Express Cargo. Um, which was tabled to this evening's meeting from an earlier meeting. Um, we received a request from the uh, applicant advising that uh, they had recently submitted plans to the township um, <coughs> consistent with the request and direction of the council during the uh, earlier part of that hearing. Uh, those plans having been recently submitted um, the administration, the professionals have not yet had an opportunity to complete the review and to prepare the review letters for, for council. Um, so accordingly, <coughs> this would be appropriate to table to your 
probably your next agenda. The next date would be uh, June 26. Is that what you're suggesting would be appropriate? Yes. Okay. So we'll ask for a, a motion to be put on the floor. I'll make a motion to table agenda item four, consideration of prim preliminary and final land development for Shacks Express Cargo uh, tax parcel 02-075-079. To a date certain of June? To a date certain of June 26, 2023. All right, we have a motion on the floor? I'll second. We have a second on the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And against any abstentions? Okay. Moving on to uh, then, we're going to move on back to uh, agenda item number two, which is public comment. Is there anyone like to make any comments on the agenda items that are left on for this evening? Not seeing anyone come forward. I'm going to move on to agenda item number three, which is the approval of the council minutes. That was for the meeting of May 22nd, 2023. I'll make a motion to I'll make a motion to approve the council minutes from May 22nd, 2023, as presented. All right, we have a motion on the floor. Second. Second on the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And against any abstentions, that is unanimous. Moving on to agenda item number. Five, this is a consideration on a public hearing on an ordinance amending chapter 225, vehicles and traffic. Article three, parking regulations, section seven, parking, standing, stopping. This is in the appendix number, uh, letter A, shall be amended to add the following restrictions. No parking, stopping, or standing, anytime sign. And that's gonna be in, in a new Trevos Road Direction of the traffic would be all directions, and the location is the entire length. Mr. Uh, Worcester, would you like to explain what's happening here to us and to the um, residents? This particular one. Uh, Mr. President, I was not involved in. Uh, I believe this came from the police department's recommendation associated with the uh, the parking regulations associated with uh, with New Trevos Road. So uh, this is. Uh, so why, why don't I why don't I hop in, Phil? Okay. So as will happen from time to time, the administration received um, uh, a request for the township to consider um, inst installing no parking along a township road. Um, usually the um, the requests come as a result of issues with either traffic being able to get through or the uh, safe, safe view of, of oncoming traffic uh, being obstructed by cars parking on the road. Uh, in this case, uh, for New Trevos Road, uh, the township received complaints about trucks and cars parking along the roadway and obstructing views, making turns difficult, and reducing the roadway essentially to one lane. Um, a good number of the vehicles that were parking on the road were, in fact, delivery trucks uh, that were uh, going to Target or Home Depot, um, or, in this case, the, the parking of the cars were resulting in delivery trucks going to Target and Home Depot, not being able to enter those properties. The township had a traffic safety analysis done by the traffic uh, safety officer. A copy of his conclusions are in your packet. Um, the conclusion, obviously, was to recommend that uh, the township make uh, it no parking, stopping, or standing any time on both sides of New Trevos Road. Accordingly, uh, the administration prepared the uh, ordinance that is in your packets for this evening for your consideration. It has been properly advertised in the uh, Bucks County Courier Times, and if council is of a mind to adopt it, it will make it no parking, standing, or stopping in all directions of travel for the entire length of New Trevos Road. All right, thank you for your in-depth uh, description of what's happening there on that. Is there uh, any council members like to make any comments at this time? Not hearing anyone. Is there anyone from the public who'd like to comment on this proposed ordinance? Not seeing anyone come forward. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the request for no parking stopping or standing any time signs for new Trevos Road in all directions as as recommended by our police traffic control and presented tonight. 
All right, so we have a motion on the floor. I would like to have a second, if we would. I'll second it. We have a second on the motion. Any additional comment? And not hearing any, all those in favor signify with an aye. 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 Any against? Any abstentions? And that is unanimous. <clears throat> Moving on to agenda item number six. This is a consideration of ESCO release. This is J.P. Morgan Chase Bank, release number one, 1729 Street Road. Tax map parcel 2-043-305. Phil, you can take this one. I could, okay. Mr. President. That's why I have Quentin here tonight. <laughs> Mr. President, um, so I'll be handling this for Mr. Worsett this evening. Uh, so first release is uh, J.P. Morgan Chase Bank, 1729 Street Road, Sunday. in the amount of $422,000. Eight or four four hundred twenty-two thousand eight dollars and forty-five cents. It's their first release. Uh, there's a couple issues that we have, which are documented in your packet. Um, so we're do? just holding money, I believe, for some landscaping, um, as well as the contingency, just to make sure that we do get those things taken care of. All right, that's a lot of escrow release. Uh, based on the original amount, and you're confident with the amount remaining of about $27,000 is sufficient. Is correct. That correct. We only have a little bit of landscaping that has to be monitored for growth. That's all. They were those too small for our requirements. Okay. And there's a presentation. Uh, your pleasure, ladies and gentlemen. What's that? Oh. I'm not speaking to the person. Okay. Would anyone like to make a motion on this uh, proposed? Uh, Release. I'll make a motion that we uh, grant the release for J.P. Morgan Chase Bank. Release number one, the amount of four thousand four hundred and twenty-two thousand eight eight dollars and forty-five cents, as recommended and audited by our finance department. All right. So we do have a motion on the floor. Second. Second, a motion. Any additional discussion? Not hearing any. Those in favor, signify with an aye. 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 And again, and any abstentions? All right, that's unanimous again. And agenda item number seven, we have another um, release for Amazon.com service. Yes, this is Amazon phase one at 3750 State Road. This is again in next row release number one in the amount of $1,004,237. We are holding $20,000 again for some landscape, um, as you can see in your packet. The other item that we were holding on was some drainage runoff issues, which actually with the rain today, we, I was actually down there just checking on things, which looked pretty good. So we'll probably be doing another release for them sometime soon for that request as well. And Mr. Mayor, we have additional money in escrow for the road improvement, is that correct? Is that what you had told us? Mr. Paizo? Yes, uh, under the township's <laughs> land development approval for this project, um, the project's being done in several phases. This is the escrow release for phase one. Um, the township is still holding um, uh, escrow in the amount of, I believe, roughly two and a half million dollars for off-site road improvements that are to be completed by this developer at the intersection of Dunks Ferry and, I'm sorry, Winks, Winks. 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 and State Road. Winks and State Road. Um, similarly, the, for phases two and three, there will also be escrow uh, developer agreements and escrows posted for that as well. So the, the administration is, believes that uh, uh, there's adequate escrow that remains both for the future on-site work and the future off-site work. Okay. Would anyone like to make a motion on this release? That's proposed. Yeah, make a motion for Amazon.com no, services. <laughs> release number one uh, for Amazon tax parcel 0209 in the amount of $1,004,237 as recommended and audited by our finance department. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. I'll second it. We have again a second on this motion. And uh, any additional comments on it? And not hearing any, all those in favor? Aye. And against and the abstentions, that is unanimous. And agenda item number eight, this is a consideration of a reduction of a permit fees for the gym rooftop project, 
required for the location of sprinkler heads in the Ben Salem High School gym is located on 4319 Humboldt Road, Ben Salem, of course. And uh, who wants to take this, Joseph? Certainly. Uh, council has previously approved, and I believe the township has issued permits for the replacement of the rooftop uh, heating and air conditioning units at the high school gymnasium. Um, one of the um, resultant bits of work that has come from that has been that certain of the uh, sprinkler heads located within the gymnasium are going to have to be relocated to accommodate the installation of the new HVAC units. Uh, the high school has requested as part of their permit submission uh, the typical reduction in uh, of uh, fees associated with that permit. As you can see, the permit fee is $218.50, which would make the reduction $111.50. The administration has reviewed it and finds the request acceptable in form and content. If council is of a mind to approve it, that is their recommendation. Okay. So it's good to know that they're finally fixing the air conditioning unit at the high school and getting everything done. It's taken them quite a while. I'm glad to hear that Mr. Cohen, the board, and everybody was able to finally get this completed. Ms. Benitez, you were on the board. You were working towards it. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. I mean, I would like to ask for a motion on the floor. I'll put a motion on the floor to reduce the permits for Ben Salem Township School District for their um, roofing um, project to the amount of $111.50 as stated on the paperwork. Well, so we do have a motion on the floor. Second. I do have a second. All those in favor, signify with an aye. 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 And against, the abstentions, unanimous. And moving on to public uh, comment, uh, club public comment, which is agenda item number nine. Would anyone like to come up, come up and make some comments? We have a lot of people in the audience. Would you like to come up and make a comment? You put your hand up. Please do come up. There is no, it's number nine we have. Go ahead, I invite you. Thanks, John. That would be great. I, I'm the you, guinea pig. You, you want to give us your name and yes. your address, and then you can let us know uh, why you're here this evening. Mr. Chairman, Council, Mr. Mayor, my name is John Creighton. I'm a lifelong resident of Grove Avenue in the Oakford section of Chamonix Falls of this township, born and raised. I'd like to bring some concerns to you that we have. Um, first off, I'm sure you've heard a lot of this, but we are really getting dumped on with ATVs, big time. We have the Hilltop Athletic Club there, which I'm also a member, but I'm not very happy right now. The woods are wide open. We're getting quads, Jeeps with no license plates, all muddy, no license plates, coming off of Bristol Road from the old Trevers Firehouse that section where the falls are. That's owned, if I think, uh, by the water department. They're coming across Bristol Road, up Grove Avenue. There's 12 uh, homeowners on that street. Most of them are here tonight. We've had it. We've spoke with Hilltop. Like I said, I know everybody. I was born and raised there. They need to put a fence up because they're allowing members. We don't have a problem with the members, but they are also trespassing 200 yards past Hilltop. That's all probably except this property. They're coming up the, the railroad behind our homes. They're partying, they're drinking, they're spinning their quads and their dirt bikes around and, and vehicles. And the, the dust is just unbelievable. We're right there. Can't open your windows. 2.30 in the morning, we make phone calls. We have a very slow response time of the officers getting there. 
That is frustrating. By the time an officer gets there, we understand my son's a retired Philadelphia cop. I have uh, police officers and military in my family. It's, it's uh, something that we feel like we're just being dumped on down there. I'm sorry, you said 2.30 in the morning? Is yeah, that what we've, you said? Yeah, residents have made phone calls all hours. <clears throat> By the time the, the officers get there, we understand it's a big township. I retired out of this township as a UPS freight driver 25 years. I know all about it, and it takes time. But by the time they get there, everything's gone. It's like they all know, but we're the ones who got to deal with it. And then they're back 20 minutes later. And yeah. It goes on all week long. Sometimes they don't come out at all. Friday night, we had a fire behind you. We're gonna, if you're going to make comments, we're going to need you to come up to the podium so we can hear you. But OK, but I appreciate your concern. Please do come up if you'd like to say something. Oh, yeah. But we get uh, we we get a lot Mr. of uh, Mr. President. Could I, could I excuse me? Yeah, let's a, go ahead, Mayor. You have something to comment on? Go ahead. I would like them to come in where we meet with the director and the police department because this is the first I've heard yeah. of it. Mr. Mayor, I'm I'm available. I am retired. Oh, you can speak for everyone. But yeah, I, mean, I can I, speak. We need to come in and get yeah. this right because I, I have, haven't heard of this honestly. Yeah, that, I understand. I I've, I've spoke with you before. <clears throat> I got a lot of faith in you. That's well, why but I'm I, here. But I, we need our police stuff. you need it brought to your This attention. is big time police stuff, right. so we're going to have to run and some. And Grove kind of Avenue, background. folks, is a tiny little street. Yeah. And most of the officers, because of my service here, I know them. And I have nothing against what takes them so long to get there. I'm not blaming them. But I was born and raised on that street. And my wife and I. We're on the higher side of Grove Avenue. My family, most of my family live on Grove Avenue. Seven, seven people are my family. But you said you and have called the department at different times. Yeah, all the residents have times. called different times for different uh, right. things going on. All right, the mayor wants to meet with you. Uh, okay. If we can have our secretary get your, tel your telephone number. Yes. And your address. Yes. And we can have that. And then you can give us a call at the township. Please call the mayor's sure, sure. number and directly. You would want to come, it's yeah. really good. And, and, and and just one second, just to let you know, uh, Bill Eves, I work with Bill Eves, who lives in your street. <laughs> and he called me and told me he could make it tonight. Okay, that's my neighbor. Yeah, and, 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 and uh, I asked him to write me an email. Okay. He wrote me an email. It was, only, it was after 5 o'clock by the time I forwarded. I forwarded to the mayor's <laughs> office at right. 5 o'clock. And to Dawn, Dawn, his uh, his assistant. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, once once tomorrow morning, even though we appreciate you coming. Yeah, I spoke. The with mayor Bill. would have been on top of this mm -hmm. uh, uh, the tomorrow yeah, morning. Oh, I know. Building. I know. I I have full faith in you. Trust me. Yeah. But this is actually. He said they're lighting off M80s too and M80s, starting fires. M80s. They just and, set off yeah. those railroad ties behind our yeah, homes. Said, there was yeah. a big fire there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they they weren't M80s. They were the next size up. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. yeah, it's not good. But the bottom line here, we folks, a, is we got to end this. I've already came more. down Bristol Road from Brownsville Road, and there's two idiots that live up there somewhere. They're doing wheelies down the right side of, like heading east on Bristol Road. I'm going towards Brownsville from Grove Avenue to Chamonix Falls. You can't even see them. And they're cutting across from the old Tree Rose Firehouse that they closed now. It's for ambulances. There's an ambulance service in there near the tunnel. They're cutting right across from you. We all have car insurance, driver's license. I'm 65 years old. I've still got a, cl a clean CDL and a driver's license. And I'm thinking, come on. Yes, How really? did it get to this For point? the safety of everyone involved, because not that long ago, several years ago, we did have um, an individual actually got killed who was driving the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the thing. The, quad, the, the, the quad. I think so I heard about were, that. I might have been still working there. kind of remember that, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and for the safety of everyone, the mayor will, and, and the police department, who has have the authority, uh, you can discuss I assure you, we'll work with on them. Mr. Me, President. Can I, just, can I just put in here for a minute? Excuse me for one minute, but yeah. I've been to the police department, and guess what? They keep sending me here all the time. We call. They can't do nothing about it. Their hands are tied. 
we well, this will, is the first you're showing up at a at here, meaning the council meeting. You guys and, come. And the mayor is I'm telling sure you that we'll you want to go to the administration. Because I called politicians in the area. I've done that. You have to come up here. You have, I you have four so grandchildren that stay with us. Two have special needs. I have an adult autistic child. When these things are going in outside of my backyard, my kids are freaking out. What is your name, if you'd be kind Tina enough? Tina Trout. Tina Trout? Okay, thank you, We've Tina. We've called the police Tina. numerous times. I've called politicians. And what I'm asking from everybody in this community I don't, is When you say politicians, what does that mean? I don't understand. I've called state representative. Um, I think I've also spoke to somebody from Casey Tomlinson's office. I just keep getting Well, this is a township there. problem. That's right. why the mayor spoke up immediately and said, Right. He'll address the problem. Why do I keep being sent here? Well, because you're being sent here because the police department are doing what they can do, but they're telling you that it's got to be done through the administration, and they, they don't know the difference between the council and or the, the mayor. I mean, we all work together. That's what they say. So they did the right thing, telling you to come here. Mm -hmm. But this is the first time you're coming here, and so we're going to address it immediately. And the mayor already immediately jumped into the conversation and said, come to me. We'll have a meeting and we'll, we'll get this resolved because we agree with you 100% yeah. that this is not, nothing that you should have to live with as being a resident of Ben Salem. So. Yeah, Tina and a lot of the residents, my wife and I naturally, our kids are going, but they, they, they can't even bring the strollers. And there's a few, they, the kids can't play there. Grove Avenue is a mess. You can't have a window or a door. Open. No, and so is in the sure. Chamonix Falls station which is uh, SEPTA's property. And SEPTA was addressed uh, with this because an incident happened not too long ago where a family member of me, uh, he, he got his pickup truck stuck on their property and we couldn't go get it, naturally. It's, it, it's private property. And they picked that pickup truck up with a crane and destroyed it. And we were told by SEPTA after 11 o'clock p.m. when the last train came through, they would send their crew up with a four by four pickup truck and get him unstuck and bring it outside the back of our home. They have a gate up that they never lock. So the, the kids and the quads, they just open it up and go. They're driving Jeeps on the train tracks. Come on. I was what are we going to do when, now with this thing that happened with I-95, now everybody's going to be parking at the train station to have the train to get to work. We have quads and, and bikes all over the place. They're going to be destroying people's vehicles. They really are. I mean, we're dealing with fires. I even called cops last night. I had kids all out there hanging out there. I smelled fire. I had to call the police. I mean, this is late at night. Graffiti on the sheds. My shed is loaded with graffiti. Well, it, 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 they can't do that. I mean, it's illegal because the quads don't have licenses. They're not allowed to do it. So, I mean, the right. you know, mayor, will, mayor will make sure that the I was our on director Bristol Road yesterday. Yeah, handle this. Headed west. Uh, off, right off, of Bra off of uh, Brownsville Road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was halfway, and four quads, one behind the other, right on the highway, yes, coming sir. down there. Yeah. Speed. That was yesterday. Please do. My, my house backs up. I'm Jim Gregory. Jim? Yes. Good. My house backs up to the end of the parking lot of the Chamonix Falls train station. Right, okay. I knew we At were the end of the parking lot, it's all stone, dirt, stone. Every day, kids come in, spinning out. I get dusted out every 20 minutes. It's a pain in. I can show you a, fr a Friday night, a fire that they started from a, a loud explosion. Saturday night, they came in, they were doing donuts in the parking lot, drinking, smashing bottles. This goes on all, all through the night. I can't keep going out there. No. They're going to want to shoot you, me. You've gotten to a point where uh, exactly, it's, only me it's, it's beyond you being able to live in a comfortable, reasonable way. It's either that or we way. move. And we've yeah. been here for 80 years, yeah. our family. Yeah, it's not no way to live. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We appreciate that. Debbie, you're going to get his life. number, is that correct? We're going to contact... What's that? 
sorry. Okay, we're going to contact just, we you. Just we just had We're going to contact you tomorrow. The mayor is going to contact you tomorrow, his office. We're going to set up some kind of a time. It's going to be good, hopefully for the majority or whoever would like to be there, whoever's representing your, your group. Yeah, we'll, we'll be there. Can I have one there, minute? There's a fire. That's fire. Okay. This is right behind our head. This Chris could be... Oh, some my gosh. Side. Okay. Something you guys... This is a big fire. Can I show you a picture? Find your picture. Uh -huh. But they're, they're burning out. This is our quick first name. This is 20 feet from my house. It's crazy. You can't go this. Show it to the mayor, too, and show it to the other council people here. This is actually the best. The building is right there. Yeah, I see it. It's getting worse and worse. Resurrection, exactly right. That's why you guys are going to meet with the mayor and get all that clear, cleared up. This way we can legally, I know, it's we, can legally, huh? we can legally make seven. All right, we're, we're, we can, uh, we can guys, we're getting out of hand a little bit relative to everybody's talking to everybody. We know what's happening. Uh, the mayor has told you that he's going to address this with the director of public safety. Uh, so we know what we're doing, and uh, this is not uh, this is not just an individual occurrence in Ben Salem. It, it happens, and it happens in different locations in Ben Salem, and it's not easy to address. Let me tell you, right. it, it, like, you hit it right on. Mm -hmm. By the time the police get there, they're gone. Right. And oh, so we, we have to set up a game plan relative to when you think you believe they're going to be there, so you can have officers waiting for them to arrive. And I'm not telling the police what to do and how to do their business, to, but the mayor knows because he's dealt with this before. So First, why don't we give you a call? 30 more seconds, please. No, please do. Okay. The, um, the police, 100%, I agree, their hands are tied. I understand that. They, they cannot chase them. They cannot do this. But there's a law in Philadelphia they passed. I don't even know if you have it up there, and that will be on you guys to decide that, where if they see it parked on any property anywhere, they can take it. Cops do, yes. Yes, they can take it automatically. They don't have to, they can go right on properties and take these dirt bags, dirt bikes off of their properties and everything and eliminate it. Because guess what? Pretty soon you're going to be living in Kensington with trees. That's all it is. And it just seems, it just seems like we're, we're feeling it the most. I know it's in the township. I see it. But what happens is we Nor are surrounded we. by woods down there. It is all dirt bike and quad trails. It's never been this bad. And I've seen it when I was a kid. And, but back then, I had to deal with the neighbors and my father. It ain't like that nowadays. You all know that. My dad would have, I wouldn't be here talking to you. You know, he would right. have uh, did the right thing. We have a scheduled meeting tomorrow. The mayor is going to put it together so as many residents can be there. Okay. And that's the appropriate time, especially when we have the director of public safety. Okay. being there with you to address different items, as, as you had just said a moment ago, uh, with which I thought was kind of funny when you said dirt bags as opposed to dirt bikes. <laughs> I didn't say that. No, you didn't say it. Jimmy said it over there. Mr. Paisa, maybe we can look into that law that they have in Philadelphia and see That's if it's something that we can do here yeah. also. I'm not sure with us be, being a, a second-class township how that would work, but if we can do what they're doing. Because we have it in my neighborhood in Eddington. They're flying around right. the streets, and we had someone get killed in Eddington with it. It's, it's all over. They're not even caring about woods. They're doing streets. They're doing, you know, doing all kinds of stuff. So maybe we can look into the law. Yeah, see, they're also, also bringing them in on trailers up Grove Avenue. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, we see a lot of Jersey plates. And I know social media has a lot to do with a lot of crap, like the time they were spinning out up in the Chamonix Mall, I know you know about it. We heard it from way down there. It's, it's not, it's just something that we're happy that you want to address this and you want a meeting. Okay, okay we'll do it, we because, got it. Because, like you said, and I agree, if we're not here, you got so much going on like the rest of us in our lives and our plates, okay? But we're asking you to just do the right thing. It's for everybody. We're glad it's you came before us. us, and even though the mayor, and this is an administrative uh, endeavor, but we're glad you came before council, so we're aware of it, because this is the first time I think any of us are hearing this 
you had the problem up in Chivas. So and we knew. Five to five, I got a call and I emailed the mayor at five after yeah. five. And we appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and Bill Layton, yeah, he, did make he, it he was he telling me the whole story. I go, Bill, you got to put it in writing. He put right. it in writing, laid it out. So I, and I, I forwarded it. All right, well, thank you very much for coming before us. We have it. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Oh, I don't know if Peter. Thanks, John. Yeah, they can't have like that. It's a bunch of crap. You know what it's like in the ending. It's even worse because you're really close. We used to play football and baseball against those guys up in up there. We had to work with those guys. They were up there. Yeah. They're all cats on the school. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, is there anyone else who would like to come forward uh, for uh, public comment? Not seeing anyone come forward, I'm going to close that portion. Agenda item number nine. Moving on to agenda item number 10. <clears throat> we have um, Mark. Agenda item number 10. Okay, moving on to that, which is uh, other business from personnel. I'm going to go through our township engineer. Phil, was there anything you want to add this evening? Uh, the only thing I wanted to bring up, um, Mr. President, is I wanted to explain a little bit about Quentin because I kind of made a little joke that Quentin's here for the escrow leases. He does a great job out there on the field. We all know that and checking things like the drainage and so forth. He's the hands-on person with regard to these escrow releases and what is done and what isn't done. I simply on those review the things with him and so forth. So he's been doing them for the last, uh, you know, four months doing doing this type of thing and, and continue to get it. So I just wanted to clear that up that he's, he's doing a great job and, and deserves to be doing that rather than just me. And, and so, uh, and you're, you're doing what? You're reporting on it? Is that I'm, I'm just reporting on it. I'm having him here and <laughs> now he's going to want to raise though, I think, but. Okay. All right. Traditionally we have gone to our engineer for those remarks. So we'll take it from there. All right, Debbie. You don't want to make excuses for what you're doing? <laughs> She now, Phil, we, she we, know, we know you job. have it under control, We're blessed. absolutely, and we appreciate the fact that you're, you're letting him, giving him the opportunity to, to present it to us. Okay, we appreciate that, and uh, we have, I guess, Paisos out here with the helping the, the neighbors. Mr. Mayor, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Just re remember, Flag Day is coming up on Friday. There you go. It's a National Flag Day, and Wednesday. certainly with Wednesday. Wednesday. It's Wednesday. It's what? in two days. Wednesday. Wednesday? Yes. June 14th. 14th. Yeah, it's the 14th. All right. So celebrate it Friday. I celebrate Flag Day every day. So, and I wish everybody did. But anyway, yeah, so let's remember that on Wednesday. Uh, Is that a lunch picnic for the... Concerts have been going great, even with the, the smoke fog that we had last Wednesday. We got really it through it. The, uh, this Wednesday is uh, Lights Out with uh, Frankie Valley. So uh, I'm going to be there for that one. That's a tribute on Frankie Bell. I love him. So uh, uh, the other thing is you heard about how we're going to work traffic here and work around it with Phil and Bill and all of us working together. We'll get through it somehow. Uh, we don't have a choice, right? So we'll try to make it work that Ben Salem doesn't have any impact on this thing. That's all I have, Mr. President. Well, that's... And we got rain, thank God. Yeah, yeah we did. We have got a bit... Too quick and too fast, but at least we got it. All right, we'll go to our council members. Michelle Benitez, would you like to go first? Well, we won't see you, so enjoy your Father's Day. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you. And we'll go over to uh, Councilman Knowles. Joseph, would you like to? Yeah, I would just reiterate <coughs> that uh, it is Friday, <coughs> the 14th. It's my brother Mike's birthday, so I know it's the 14th. And, Who's uh, his birthday? Yours? My brother Michael. What number oh, is it? Oh, well, you have uh, a Mike's number uh, 11. You have a choice of 11 to, to no. pick out birthdays. It's Bill's say. birthday is 16, so I know that's not flag birth. All He's right, happy birthday. 10. He's and number 10. We'll go to... Uh, and also, happy Father's Day. I think it's important. Oh, that's right. Uh, oh, Michelle right. mentioned it, but uh, I think that mothers are important, but I think fathers are important, too. Yes. And uh, I think it's a, it, oh it, it's a nice it's day. Birthday. Yeah, you're going to probably get a scarf or something. A cigar? Yeah, I something. Was, <laughs> All right. I want a, I want a big steak or something. <clears throat> Enjoy. Councilman Plary. 
Ditto. They're running me over here, man. Okay. That's a hundred second birthday. Hundred second. Wow. Today. Council of Women Champion. Yes. It's the most important one. You're next to last, I'd say. I ditto everything. Happy Father's Day to all the dads <laughs> out there. Biological, adopted, whatever, however you be. Happy Father's Day. Enjoy your day with your families. Okay, and I'm going to comment. Oh, on and what, Happy Flag Day. I'm sorry. And, and I'm going to comment on what the mayor had said that uh, I had looked this up so I could present it. But on uh, the uh, Continental Congress on June 14th, 70s, 1777, created the American flag with these 14 stripes, and the, it was 13 stars at that time. Uh, on a blue white white stars with the blue background, as we know that what that flag looks like, and on uh, May 30th, 1916, Woodrow Wilson proclaimed June 14th to be Flag Day. So there's a little bit of history, so you have something to take home with you tonight, besides this bickering back and forth, and hopefully trying to resolve the problems of the township. With that, I'm going to say uh, uh, again the uh, the theater. The amphitheater with the presentation they have, they really have some talent out there, so may take an opportunity to get there. It's unbelievably inexpensive, and it's well worth the time. It's really a great, great time. All right. The food trucks are great. Rooster <clears throat> and the chicken, the Kona pizza, and the corn guy, they're all really good. Okay, and there we go. With that, the meeting is over. Thank you. Thank you. Back. Yes. Sorry, Joe, did you want to say something? No, it's too late. Okay.